Um, hello and welcome to this short tutorial on um, using an app called GeoSpike, uh, which is what we are currently using uh, for monitoring our sites with. Um, I'm going to be doing this on an iPad um, and I'm just going to mirror my screen so you can see uh, what I'm doing. So this is probably not going to be absolutely seamless, but I'm going to do the best I can. So the first thing you need to do is get um, the app GeoSpike. So if you go to wherever you normally go to get your apps from, uh, this is still open from the last time I did it, but yeah, you would type in GeoSpike, a list will come up and there is GeoSpike. So we'll click on GeoSpike. And it'll come up. I've got the cloud logo here because I've already got it on another device, but normally you'd have the get button and we will click on that and just let it download. Um, you'll see here that the GeoSpike was originally um, invented as an app uh, more or less for backpackers that you can go to specific points, you can spike them, you can add photos and any text you want to, and then it eventually saves it as a KML folder so you can then integrate it into Google Maps, you can share it with other people. Um, for whatever reason, it just massively hasn't taken off at all. There's very few users on it, the reviews aren't very good, um, but uh, I mean, we find for our purposes it's incredibly useful. Whether it will exist forever, I don't know, but either way, it's all fully synced and all the data is as a KML folder. So if we need to move it onto another app, we will at some point. Um, but yeah, this does seem to be the best one um, for our purposes. Okay, so that has now um, loaded. I don't know why that was, that was slightly slower than normal. Normally that is fairly instant. So we'll just click on open and it will take us into the app. Um, there's a welcome screen here, which, um, yeah, that, that is all there is to it really, but we'll shut that down for the moment. Um, so here we are, if we, if we click on spikes at the moment, you will see these are all the public spikes um, put on here, which are all very much sort of backpacker things. There's three types of spike. There's private spikes, which only you can see, nobody else can see. Um, there's public spikes, which anyone using the app can see or anyone on the web can see. And then there's friends apps, and those are the ones we use, which means you'll be able to see um, are spikes and vice versa, but nobody else will, which is why there's this slightly convoluted next step um, that you need to sign up and follow us. So if you go down to profile at the bottom and click on that, so it will say you're not currently logged in and we need to sign up and create an account. So I'm gonna click on sign up there. Now this has been quite hard for me because every time I've done it, I've had to do it from a new email address. Um, I've had a few sort of false starts trying to make this video in one seamless go. So this is a new email that I've just uh, created now. Whoops. And um, passwords. I've got some daffodils on my desk at the moment. So I'm going to do daffodil 2018 and then hopefully type that correctly again, Daffodil 2018. So that is not the password to my bank account. Um, you entered on it, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Um, now, um, it gives you, as it says, it does give you this sort of code name to start off with. Now you do need to put your actual username in because we need to keep track on who is following us. Now I would say I tried this earlier and for some reason it didn't like me. Um, so I, yeah, I know it's still being a bit funny about this. So it may well be that we just pause this step at the moment and then I come back to it. Christ. real name. Okay, so let's see if this is going to work. So I'm going to click on continue. Oh, it worked. Brilliant. Um, do I want monthly emails? No, thank you very much. And there we go. I'm in.
Right, so on my, uh, I don't think we need notifications to any what you normally do. So there you will see a very, very blank page with all the places in the world that I haven't been to. Um, if we go to the spikes page, um, that's back on the public page, so we still got the same thing there. Now, what you need to do is now find us. So on this page, so we've gone back to the profile page, you will see uh, an option saying find friends. So if you go into find friends and put in species, because that is our username on it, we will search and there you go. Sorry, it's just syncing to the screen, species SRT. Um, and ignore that and we are going to follow. You are now following species. Do you want species to see your friends only spikes? Yes, we will want to allow that. The species is now your friend, which is a rather lovely start to it all. Now at this stage, uh, it takes a few seconds, but I'm gonna get a notification um, at any point now, you will hear my phone beep saying that um, this new user has followed us and then I need to approve it. And it's just a, essentially a kind of security step. Um, to make sure that we're not having random strangers following us. Now, I never know how long this takes. I think sometimes it's pretty instant and sometimes it's not. So while we're waiting for that to happen, I'm just gonna talk you through um, the spikes navigating. So there's spikes. Now there's three options up here at the top which are fairly self-explanatory. The globe one, that's public spikes. So that's things people have put from all over the world. This one here is your personal spikes, uh, which as you can see has got nothing on. And then the one we're interested in is this one in the middle. Um, it kind of makes sense from the logo. This is what's called your cohort. Now, if we clicked on this before, it would have been blank, but because, okay, so I've had the, you won't be able to see that, I've had the notification saying Dominic Price 2 is now following you on Geospike, and I am going to allow that. Now, at the moment, we have two public sites. So as you can see, there's my, there's a test site just around the corner from me and the SRT test site, and that's all you're seeing, the two sites. But I'm now gonna follow, and I'm gonna allow this new user Dominic Price 2 to see all of our sites. Okay, so if we now go back to the spikes page, and there are the public ones, um, you'll recall before we only had two sites on here. Now, because we've allowed, uh, we followed you, and uh, well, you followed us and we followed you back, you now have access um, to all of our sites. Um, you can view it if you click this button at the top here. This is on list view. Um, you can view it on map view as well. Um, and that has all the sites on. This isn't quite as good as our Google map because it has the same color um, flag for all the sites. So it's not quite as useful. Um, but that's one way of doing it. So in fact, we'll go back to list view. Um, now you'll see from um, the sites, they use the same code system as we do on the database. So um, LI here is Lycopodia Inundata, NF is the new forest sites, and then they all have a number and a code. Um, so we will go into um, Sagbury Hill. So we go, there's a photo of the site itself. And there is a picture of the actual plant. Now I'm going to find one, I mean, that's a pretty good one, but a, a really kind of good example of one which will help you find the plants when you go out there. So we'll search for Thursley. That will just take a while to bring up the Thursley sites. Now, here's a good example. Um, of a site, so Thursley Linear Scrape, um, which took three of us to find, there's only one plant on there. Um, and this, in terms of the photos, is really why it's so good. And it's particularly good if you do carry pegs in your field kit. So um, 
what it will do, it will enable you to find this scrape, but when you get there, as long as you can stand in roughly the same place, you can see that's where the plant is, and there it is. It's a sort of moderately small one, which was next to that peg, and that will just show you what you're looking for um, with that site. It will also, um, there will be information on there. So Thursley linear scrape, what you will see you have as well, is the information. So in 2017, one plant, seven meters up scrape, habitat good with plenty of bare ground, but population clearly struggling. And this is one of the beauties of this app, that you have that information with you. So if you were to go back in 2018 and find three plants, that'd be brilliant. But if you were to go back and find there wasn't much bare ground because things like millennia were coming in, it just gives you that sort of comparative data. Um, the other thing it enables you to do is the mapping feature of it here. So you will see here we've got this slightly featureless map with a flag in the middle. We can click on that. It will tell us we're 77 kilometers away from us at the moment. And there's a couple of things you can do with this. You can use it directly on the app. But if you see um, that button up there, if you click on that, it will then open it in your default um, mapping app. Now, if it's a site which isn't that near you, this is pretty useful because um, you can just use it to actually get yourself to the site and it'll tell you your mileage, you know, how long to get there, et cetera, et cetera. Hopefully none of you will have to go that long because the whole idea is to have sites local to you. Um, so the other thing it will do, and we're just going to go back to the main set of sites. So this is a, um, a made up site I've made. This is just around the corner from us. It doesn't have much information on it because I just created it yesterday. It's where they're knocking down a building. But what you will see when we open it now is that here I am and here the site is. And what this will do, you can basically, if you're struggling, this is normally you'll be right out in the middle of Heathland or sort of some chalk grass, then you can essentially move and get yourself under the flag and then start looking for the plants. Now again, we could open this in our mapping app. Um, so what I could do is change it onto a satellite view. And then um, you could see here, that gives us quite a nice um, view looking actually at the aerial features of the site. Um, and that really sort of comes into its own when you're using it for um, navigating your way over Heathland. Um, and that's pretty much it. There's one other feature it's got, which I think we're probably not going to use, um, but it, it may be useful for some of you. Okay, so we're back on to the, um, the main GeoSpike app. Um, what you will see at the bottom, the way this works is, um, I'm just going to go to one which has actually got a bit more information on it. So we'll go back to Stagbury Hill. There's the information. You can't change this information. Um, that's something we'll update each year, but you could um, comment on it if you wanted to. Um, but I think we're probably not going to massively encourage the comments because it's generally better to fill in the monitoring form because that has more detail on. But what I would say, if you had a site and it was absolutely identical to the one before in terms of records, you could use that. So we could say still only one plant in 2018. And you could post that on as a comment, but I think, as I said, probably we're going to stick to the forms for the moment um, until we've sort of got this up and running. But um, yeah, that really is uh, all there is to it. Um, I, it's so much easier when you're not having to narrate and, and screen mirror and all the fiddly stuff I've had to do. So really it's just find the app, sign up, search for species and find friends, follow us, wait a few seconds, I'll follow you back and then all the sites um, will just be on there. Um, and yeah, it's, um, 
it's a really nice thing to use and hopefully it will get you to the site when it's working well it will actually get you to exactly where the plants are uh, or where the insects are um, and it will just give you that sort of background um, information to the sites which would be hard to do otherwise any problems at all just get in touch with us and um, yeah good luck with it and I, I hope that it helps you in your ventures and thank you so much um, for volunteering for us okay bye then